That woman has a once in a lifetime opportunity. A once in a lifetime opportunity. All the planets are lining up and she wants to see them through her telescope. Now this will not happen again for another 50 billion years. Wow! It's a once in a lifetime opportunity. Look at this word, once in a lifetime. Why are there hyphens in between these words? Look, we have four words, once in a lifetime. So why do we put hyphens here? Do you have any idea? Well, we use hyphens uh, to show combined meaning. Okay, so when words have one meaning together, okay, then we use hyphens to show that combined meaning. Okay, so it's not once in a lifetime, it's once in a lifetime. It's one idea, one concept, almost like one word, except it's four words, right? Look at this, mother-in-law, mother-in-law. Do you know what a mother-in-law is? Mother-in-law is your wife's mother or your husband's mother. That's your mother-in-law. But it doesn't really have anything to do with law, right? It has nothing to do with the legal system. And this word here, I mean, look, these words, there are three words, they all have different meanings, but when they're together, in one word like this with hyphens, they mean one idea, your mother-in-law, right? So we say it very quickly, mother-in-law. We don't say mother-in-law. That's my mother-in-law. No, we don't say that. We say it quick. That's my mother-in-law over there. Mother-in-law, almost like one word, okay? Now, very often we use hyphens to make two words into one adjective. Okay, so sometimes, you know, when, you, when you're trying to describe something, you would use uh, like an adjective, like dark. Let's say, you know, the room was dark, the dark room. Dark is the adjective. But what if you wanna use two words? Look at this example. It was hard to see his face in the dimly lit room dimly lit. It's a very good writing, good descriptive writing. When you write things, it's good to be descriptive. So dimly lit. Dim means very low and lit means the amount of lights. Okay, so, so there are no lights in the room. It's hard to see his face. Okay, it was hard to see his face. I wasn't sure who was in the room because the room was too dimly lit. Maybe there was one small light somewhere in the room, or maybe a candle in the room, but it was too dark. I, I couldn't see his face. Okay, so dimly lit. We need this here uh, because these two words are sort of becoming one adjective. Okay, you'll see this a lot in English. Let's take a look at another example. The man playing the trumpet is a well-known musician from Bulgaria. Look at the word musician. Musician is a noun. Okay, so the word or words before a noun that describe it are adjectives. So here is this well-known musician. What kind of musician is he? He's a well-known musician. Okay, so we put a hyphen in between these words. Well-known. It's almost like becomes one word. It's not well-known. It's well known. If we, if we didn't have this here, it would be a little bit more confusing. Okay, for example, take a look at this. Bernie Sanders is a left-wing politician in the United States. He's a left-wing politician. Do you know what that means? Left-wing and right-wing, those are political terms. Left-wing means liberal and right-wing means conservative. Okay, so these two words, I mean, they need to be together. If they're not together, it's just confusing to read. Okay, for example, look at this. If there are two words, Bernie Sanders is a left-wing politician in the United States. Hmm. Okay, so it's, it's hard to read because we, we look at left, okay, left, wing, like a bird's wing, 
Okay. Oh, no, it doesn't mean anything to do with birds. It has to do with politics. Okay. So then we can we can figure it out if we have a little bit of time. But if we have a hyphen there like this, then it's just easier to read. It's easier to understand. Okay, the whole purpose of punctuation, like commas, periods, quotation marks, hyphens, the whole purpose of them is to make things easier, to make it easier to understand, easier to read. Okay, so the pronunciation changes a little bit when we have a hyphen. It's a little bit quicker. Okay, I want you to listen for that, all right? Now, another thing we might use a hyphen for is this. The Canada-US border is the world's longest border. Canada-US, okay? Why is there a hyphen in between there? Well, there's a hyphen to show that we're talking about the relationship there. We're talking about one border. We're not talking about the Canada US border, it's, it's one border, so to show that relationship, we use a hyphen, the Canada-US border. Or for example, maybe if your uh, ancestors are, you know, from two different countries. Let's say your mother is Irish and your father is American. Okay, then it would be, uh, you, you could talk about your Irish-American ancestry. Okay, then it would be Irish hyphen American, because you're talking about sort of those two things at the same time. Okay, now we also use hyphens to separate identical letters in a word. So some words have two letters side by side that make the word look a little bit awkward. Okay, like this, re-entry, re-entry. Let's say you go to a country and then you leave and you want to go back to that country, then you need a re-entry visa, right? A re-entry visa. If we wrote it like this, it almost looks like re-entry. It's a little bit harder to read. Right? It's a little bit confusing. Re-entry. So when we add re before a word, it sort of changes the meaning of that word. Like entry is a word by itself, right? So when we're changing the meaning of it a little bit, re-entry, then it just, it makes it more clear if we have a hyphen. Okay, same with bookkeeping, right? See these two Ks here? If we wrote it like this, bookkeeping, I mean, that's okay, you know, everyone can understand the meaning, but it just looks a little bit better if we separate those, you know, with a hyphen. Now, not all the time we do this, you know, in English, there are exceptions to everything, okay? So sometimes we do this, sometimes we don't. I just want to, to, to teach you this so that you understand what, what this is, what, what the meaning of this is, why we put hyphens in some words, okay? Now, numbers should be written with hyphens if they are between 21 and 99. Okay, so if you write out numbers, okay, if you write out long numbers like this, then you should use a hyphen, 21, 67, 99, okay? Remember that. But usually we can just write the numbers like this, like 21, 99. If a number is below 10, then you should use a word. You should write T-E-N. But if it's more than 10, it's usually okay to just write the numbers like this. Okay, now we also use hyphens in situations like this, where there's a part of a word um, that sort of makes the word a little bit different, okay? Uh, for example, like, my ex-girlfriend hates me. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, my ex-girlfriend hates me. Now, if we didn't have the hyphen, it would look a little bit like, the word would look a little bit um, unclear, like ex-girlfriend. It, it adds a lot of clarity if we use the hyphen, right? Ex-girlfriend. Or, for example, that guy has low self-esteem. Okay, self-esteem. So there's a sort of, sort of two words that are becoming one word. Okay, I don't know. I think this is, this is pretty easy to understand. I hope you understand it. So the basic idea I want you to take away from this lesson is that when you see hyphens in a word, 
Uh, those different parts are related to each other. Okay, they sort of have a combined meaning, like once in a lifetime opportunity. A once in a lifetime opportunity. Okay, now you might be wondering how you make the hyphen on your keyboard. Which key is it? Well, it's this key right here. Okay, this one is the underscore. Okay, do you know what an underscore is? A lot of email addresses have underscore. For example, first name, underscore, last name. It's when the line is at the bottom, it's the bottom of the line, not in the middle. Okay, the underscore goes down here, the hyphen goes here. Okay, so that's the hyphen there. You just make it by pressing it, and sometimes if you press it twice in a row, then it becomes a longer thing called a dash. Okay, a dash. I don't know. I made another lesson on, on dashes. You can check that out in my English writing series. I have a whole bunch of lessons in my English writing series. But hey, let's do some homework. Have you ever had a once in a lifetime opportunity? Have you ever had a once in a lifetime opportunity? Maybe you met a famous person somewhere. Hey, maybe if I get famous at Mad English TV, maybe I can meet you sometime and that would be a once in a lifetime opportunity for you. I hope it happens. We'll see. I'm not famous yet, but maybe in the future I'll be famous. Who knows? Okay, let me know your answer to this question down there in the comments, and I'll see you over in the next episode of Mad English TV. Take care.